Well, good day. This is Joe Van Cleave. Uh, you know, we're getting on toward winter here in the Northern Hemisphere and uh, getting cold. And uh, some of us like to stay indoors and do more crafty things. And we don't get out as often uh, outside in the cold months. But one of the things I, I started doing here is going through uh, my notebooks, my archives of my old uh, photography work. Now I have binders and binders full of these uh, protector sleeves and there are a lot of these are paper negatives some film but a lot of large format paper and a lot of it is pinhole photography some uh, glass lens cameras but going through the notebook here I started noticing that I have some uh, dioramas that I've done now these are like little sets you build it's a you you create your own little fantasy world and then you photograph it and create these interesting photographs that you couldn't really get any other way I was doing this mainly with pinhole cameras because of the super wide depth of focus you can get up close to a little diorama that you make I'm gonna try building a diorama I kind of take you through the process of building it and uh, my methodology for how I kind of just cobble things together, maybe without a predetermined theme or anything. Anyways, I'll take you through the process and then we'll photograph it several different ways. I'm going to photograph it with uh, paper negatives using a pinhole camera, also using a glass lens camera, and then I'll try to photograph it digitally. So this should be an interesting project and this might give you ideas for something to do in the winter months when you might feel like staying indoors. Stay tuned. So there was kind of an evolution of this idea because I started doing a lot of still life photography with pinhole cameras uh, just in, as a means of uh, coming up with some creative compositions. Now this was a five by eight format. This was uh, some kind of maybe a blue uh, plastic tarp, some leaves. This is like metal rebar and some chicken wire. Kind of, uh, you know, just an interesting composition. Uh, I don't have the positive image of this any, anywhere on my hard drive anymore, but that's just an idea. I started creating these constructed uh, still life images, and then uh, it kind of evolved from there into, well, if I can do a still life, I can maybe create some kind of a, a little miniature world. So this was an idea that I was working on this was a little set I built that was sort of like a little room and it was loosely based on growing up as a kid and I had this some kind of a little figurine I don't know where I got it from but I stuck it in the in the scene here I thought it was real interesting um, how you can take your own imagination and some simple materials like craft paper cardboard you know, you can cut out pictures and things from magazines or whatever. You can construct your own little sets and create your own artificial little world and photograph it. The style of this particular image uh, is kind of loosely based on the German Impressionist silent films of the 20s, like M and The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, because I'm purposefully using odd kind of perspectives, kind of distorting the normally rectangular these are like closet and cabinet doors and things and the doorways and the edges of the ceilings and everything are kind of skewed on purpose to kind of give that sense but you know I'm using this metal I think it's chicken wire screen material or something for the flooring interesting texture and you know these are just pieces of cardboard and paper uh, stuck together but it gives you an interesting effect here so this next one was like a little tunnel hallway that I constructed out of a thin paper that was translucent. And I set this little square tube, if you want to think of it that terms, I stuck it outside in the sun and then put my pinhole camera up and photographed it. Um, this hallway has little decorations along the walls, little pictures or something. And it, it's kind of a, a thing about corridors and... Uh, uh, pathways and you know long corridors and buildings and everything the inspiration for this corridor uh, diorama scene was 
when I was in the Navy years ago, I was uh, living on an aircraft carrier, and I was inspired by all of these corridors. And you notice in the ceiling of this corridor diorama, there are there's a cable run, these little brackets with cables running to and from, and that's kind of the way it is on board ship. But in this diorama, I made those cables. They're just black threads. So you can get real creative with this. Uh, you don't have to get real fancy, just whatever works. And this is one of the uh, principal reasons why you might want to use a pinhole camera, because you're photographing this very close up, within inches of the diorama, but you would like to have, in this case, most everything to be sharply focused. And so it's hard to do that with glass optics, uh, just because of the, the principles of optics. But with a pinhole, you can get everything near and far equally uh, focused, uh, if you will. Now, one of the first uh, dioramas that I did, it was one of the more elaborate things I did, is this. And you can kind of see the edges of the diorama scene or frame. I think there were large photographic prints that I had set up for the background, and I had some other material on the floor here. But I made this cardboard uh, building that was loosely, it was actually photographs of the Aztec Motel on Central Avenue, Route 66, which was a motel that was decorated with a bunch of art. And then I made these little cardboard sets, like a stairway and a loading dock, and this was a photograph of my mother-in-law, and this was a, a little dumpster. I actually printed in the darkroom and then cut these out and then mounted them to cardboard. And then these are actually, yes, dead insects, the, the exoskeleton that, of dead insects that I set up and then re-photographed the entire set this way as a kind of a diorama staging. Now, one of the things about this, I didn't get the exposure very good. You can see how overexposed uh, her torso is, her face is really dark, and it's relatively soft focus. But um, it gives you some kind of an idea of what you can do with this uh, if you let your imagination run free. So then there's this other series of uh, dioramas that I made back in 2008. These are like four inch square format images. And what I did here is I created a little cityscape with little cardboard boxes that I make, I taped little squares to, to make look like windows. So I made these little kind of cityscapes and I tried to make sure to, you know, make them tapered a little bit for perspective's sake and kind of a little distorted look to it. And so yesterday evening, inspired by the idea of wanting to build a diorama, but not even knowing what it was going to be about, totally off the top of my head, I took my little Ape Man GoPro clone action camera out to my workshop and shot this video. I'm basically going to be working on building a diorama and I have no idea what it's going to be. I'm just going to do this off the top of my head. I got some scrap cardboard. I got some tissue paper. I got various doodads here that I might be able to build into some kind of a diorama, kind of semi-random kind of junk uh, put together, and we'll see what it looks like. I originally salvaged this uh, piece of cardboard out of my recycle bin, uh, tomorrow's trash day, uh, with the idea of maybe using it to cut out some cardboard figures, and I might still do that, but I'm thinking that the way it is right here, it might make a little stage, you know, with the side walls and the front stage here, and Maybe I'll take the top off a little bit of it. I can use it to cut some cardboard pieces out. But this might be like a little stage background. Now I do have this wooden articulated figure that I got at a craft store. But it's almost a foot tall, a little big. And it has this uh, supporting rod going up through its posterior. It doesn't really stand up on its own feet own legs. So not sure if I'm going to use it or not. I'm thinking I might be able to take some of this stiff copper wire. Maybe I can form it into little figures. I can solder it together and then maybe I can cover the 
limbs in something to make it look more realistic. I'm not really sure what yet. Well, so I got this little rectangular torso starting point for this little guy. <clears throat> I'm going to just solder the corners together to make the rectangle and then I'll start adding parts to it. I don't want to get it too complicated. And I'm thinking to clothe it to make it look more like a figure. I don't know if I leave it as a framework it may not be able to be seen easily with a pinhole because the wire is so thin. I have this white tissue paper. I might just wrap kind of a tissue paper body around it. But I was thinking about making some like rib cage bones or something. I don't know quite what I'm going to do here. Well, this is upside down, but this is sort of a spinal cord and then the neck bone. I kind of looped it here, soldered it, and then I looped it around the shoulder blades, collar bones. It'll be the neck. Maybe put some ribs in here or something. Okay, I got this bin of metal parts. Look at this. I got more copper wire if I need it. The aluminum or the steel may not really help me. It's got some copper brass. I've got some thin. Some of this brass, like the real thin stuff, is I used for making pinholes. But I got these brass pieces, tubes, all kinds of old cuttings of brass and copper. So I should be able to uh, have enough parts in here to make up my little guy. Well, I took a piece of uh, copper and. Uh, rounded the corners a little bit and I formed this little kind of leg piece with kind of back and forth on there and it took me a bunch of uh, solder flux to get the copper wire to stick to the copper sheet and it's sort of ugly solder job but hey it's nice and heavy down there so that ought to be a good foot leg and foot I'll have to make the other one now well, this is what I got so far. Uh, <laughs> so I got the rectangular torso, the kind of spinal cord. I got legs, they're like double wires, and the little brass feet. And I got little fingers. And what do you think about that creepy face? This is like a jewelry box hasp. But it's kind of interesting, right? Kind of a creepy face. Now I'm thinking I have this rolled up really thin brass foil and I might try doing something with a body or something. I haven't quite figured it out yet. Something like that. Well, it's kind of an interesting figure. I don't know. I'm using this crinkled up brass and I have him soldered like here, 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 here. Sort of like those are his chakras, <laughs> whatever the heck that is. Anyways, well, that's my little metal man. So now I got to figure out what to do with the background in my diorama. You guys remember that old black and white movie from 1953 or 54 called Them about the giant ants? It took place in New Mexico, so that's appropriate. So you got to have at least one giant ant in the diorama. Hmm. I wonder what this guy thinks of it. I'm not so sure. So what I have here is a 2018 uh, Wounded Warrior Project calendar. It has a Grand Canyon picture and then I, I had an old astronomy magazine from, it's actually a Mead telescope catalog from 1997. One of the many things that should be thrown out. Anyways, keep in mind though that the image I'm making is going to be black and white, not color. It's because I'm going to use black and white paper or film, so it's not going to be colorful. So maybe I should turn this camera to black and white. Let's see what it looks like now. Okay, this is uh, with the scene turned monochrome. I think it's kind of interesting. You have the water going into the craters, and then you have kind of a sky thing. Of course, the calendar picture doesn't extend all the way out, so I might spray paint the rest of this black or something. I haven't really decided. I, It's possible that with the paper, the photo paper being not red sensitive, it's possible the brown um, cardboard might show up pretty dark on paper. So I may not have to worry about that. But uh, anyways, oh yeah, I was going to tell you, I have some little figures. Someone had given me one of these little steam engine little things. So I have some... <coughs> Kind of little 
blacksmith shop and a little guy with a mill, some kind of a millstone thing in the jiggy. I think the steam engine thingy itself is too big for the diorama, but maybe these two little guys. Oh yes, and of course we need our giant ant from New Mexico. Uh, the guy now looks pretty big in proportion, but eh, it's kind of interesting. <laughs> okay, look, look at some of the other artwork I clipped out of the Mead catalog from 1997. Look, I got what is this, the uh, Andromeda Galaxy, right? This is probably Orion, the Orion Nebula. And this is the North American Nebula. Here is a uh, solar flare. So I, I think I got enough here to uh, decorate the backdrop of this diorama. I taped the top flat back, and I bent the sides back so that there'd be more sunlight. I think I'll be photographing this in sunlight, I'm guessing. I decided, first of all, I think I'm going to use this picture here because it kind of reminds me of the Devil's Tower from Close Encounters. Uh, so anyways, I have the calendar. I'm using this blue masking tape, uh, painter's tape, because you can kind of reposition it. And if you do, it's not going to rip the pictures. So I'm putting some along here because I have a whole sheet here that I want to stick on to the side. I'm going to try to do one on each side. Something like that, and then I have more pictures to put along the edges of it on both sides. I have the Horsehead Nebula up here. Well, that's sort of the diorama. Kind of a space themed with a little, not really Devil's Tower, this is Red Rock State Park in Arizona, but anyway, a Devil's Tower-ish looking thing in the middle there. And then so, I guess we'll have to figure out where to put the, the ant and the metal, the heavy metal man and all that stuff. Yeah, this is all pretty standard uh, just magazine stuff. Of course this is in brilliant color. We're gonna go and try to photograph this in black and white with paper negatives and also I will photograph it digitally and as well. So Now I've switched to a longer lens right here and I've pulled the tripod back a little bit further so you see my table and my lights here but uh, now when I zoom the lens in I'm getting more of a telephoto effect on this diorama. It's not going to be quite as um, the same perspective as, as a, if you were using a, a pinhole lens, a pinhole optic closer in. It would, that would give you kind of a wider angle of view, almost like the GoPro action camera view. And I did stop the lens down on this camera to f11 to get me a little bit more depth of focus because I have some things in the foreground and some things in the background. So I did that. Uh, it might give a little diffraction, but uh, it hopefully will get everything a little bit better focused. And here is the uh, action camera, the GoPro clone perspective. Uh, again, this is a, almost a fisheye perspective. So you're seeing the top edges of the diorama set and you'd have to kind of either pull in a little bit uh, to avoid that or just uh, go ahead and break the fourth wall and let everybody know that it is a diorama set. Now daylight is going to provide you with the brightest lighting uh, usually for paper negatives because of the blue and UV light. But I'm using some daylight balanced LED light bulbs here in my lighting setup and I'm going to try doing some lengthy exposures and uh, see if I can do this indoors without having to rely on daylight. The nice thing about artificial lighting is you can adjust the lighting, the direction and angularity and diffusion of it to uh, get whatever effect you want by experimenting with it. And what I've done here is I've lowered my lights down closer to the bottom of the, the surface of the table because um, if I want to have my camera down more this level looking into it, if the lights were up above, the glossiness of these magazine photographs is going to cause glare. Like you can kind of see there's some glare happening right here. 
some of that is going to be unavoidable, but uh, uh, anyways, I'm hoping it'll be minimized. Okay, so I have set up my speed graphic camera here on the Heavy Bogan tripod, and I'm focused on the scene. Now, there is a little complication here I need to mention, which is that shooting paper negatives and artificial lighting, um, you're going to have to calibrate the film speed. You're going to have to figure out what the film speed is of the paper under artificial lighting because it's going to be different than under daylight. The spectrum of light is different in relation to the sensitivity of the paper. Instead of starting with the pinhole shot, I'm going to start with a glass lens shot. And you probably can't see it all that well, but I'm going to focus the speed graphic so that my little metal guy is in focus and I'm going to keep the lens fairly wide all the way open at f5.6 background is going to be fairly soft now I don't know what the film speed of the paper is going to be under this conditions I'm just going to have to do a couple exposures and then process them and see what I get okay I made the first two test exposures now when I was using this Arista grade 2 semi matte paper a week or so ago, I gave I had good results with an ISO of 10 outdoors. So because I'm doing it under artificial lights, I, one test was with ISO 6, and that was a uh, two-second exposure at f5.6. And then the other one is going to be ISO 3, which is four seconds at f5.6. So I'm going to go ahead and process these two paper negatives and see what we get. Well, let's see what we got here. That was nine minutes to process these pictures. Okay, the first one is ISO 6, I guess. Huh, how do you like that? I think that's pretty darn good. Highlights are um, bright, but not, not super dark, and I still have shadow detail. What about the ISO 3? ISO 3. Definitely darker highlights and the shadows, actually the shadows are better probably. We'll have to see how these scan. I'm going to rinse these and see what happens. Okay, so after about a 10 minute, actually a 20 minute rinse, um, so looking at the two negatives, the highlights in the sky of the ISO 6, which was two second exposure, they're not quite as dense. It'll probably scan better, but there's not really much detail in the face. Uh, so I'm going to use the uh, ISO 3, which is the four second exposure. And let me pull it out here and let you maybe take a look. I'm pretty happy with that, I think, overall. Again, I was focusing right on our metal man's face and this little worker guy is pretty much in focus also and I do have the so the ant is very dark dark colored but I do have some detail some shadow detail in there so I'm gonna go ahead and scan this see what I get and by the way this is the semi matte finish and you notice it doesn't have nearly the glare of glossy paper, which is uh, what I like about it. It may not be quite as sharp. I'm not really sure about that, but it certainly has less glare. Well, it's a pretty good shot overall, I think, but uh, I don't really like the way I got the metal table in the foreground. I didn't realize it when I was looking through the ground glass, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reshoot this. I have <clears throat> another film holder already loaded up with paper, so I'm going to go ahead and Shoot a couple more for test and uh, see what I get. Well, let's take a look and see what we got. So I did three seconds and four seconds. And I moved the camera a little bit closer to the diorama. Okay, I like it. This is the three second shot. And I focused also close more to the front of the metal guys so the background's a little bit more out of focus and then the four second shot here pretty cool gonna have to rinse these and then we'll scan the better of them 
So the source material for building these dioramas is really basic. Discarded cardboard, uh, newspapers, magazines with pictures, odds and ends, little bits of hardware, wire and bits and things, uh, tape, hot glue guns, just all these kind of crafty things, discarded things. You don't have to spend much money. Save some of your recycle stuff, your discard stuff in the trash, and you can use these, reappropriate them for these diorama settings. Collage things together. Make new things out of old things. Just get creative with it. Now, I do enjoy working with paper negatives. That whole process is so convenient and easy, but it's obvious that you could simply photograph these dioramas with your digital camera, your cell phone even, or whatever. Um, the difference might be, though, that the sharper the resolution of your camera system is, the more attention you're going to have to make to the detail of your diorama. You'll end up focusing much more on lifelike construction rather than it being a photograph as the main objective. And so I don't know if your goal is to spend months and months building what could be like the equivalent of a finely detailed model railroad set. If you want to get that detailed with it, go for it. But that wasn't my objective in building dioramas. It was really about uh, using, initially it was about pinhole optics and being able to build little sets where you could get near and far, equally sharp or soft, and uh, making things as simple and basic as possible to make these simple images. Now it's possible to take this diorama concept and get rather controversial or even political about it. You could take uh, the pictures out of newspapers of famous or notorious people, politicians, movie stars, whatever, and you can uh, glue them with a glue stick against a thin sheet of cardboard and cut them out along the outline of the figures. Uh, take a pencil and do some shading along the edge of the cardboard so it kind of matches the tones in the middle of the picture. And you could prop these little pictures up in your diorama put them on little wire armatures, a little block of clay or something like that. You can essentially build a diorama photograph version of a political cartoon that makes a statement. Now these pieces I was doing here I think they were a lot more obtuse and they weren't so overtly political. I think as a photographer, uh, creating and photographing these dioramas is, um, is a very interesting thing because you're combining the skill of photography and still life and portraiture with this whole other craft and art of making sets and dioramas and miniatures. It kind of... Uh, relates to the art of assemblage and collage and even puppetry. There's a lot of different things going on here. There's a lot of ways you can approach the diorama thing uh, from a photographic perspective. For instance, if you make a, a set that looks like a cityscape, let's say, and you could have little pieces of cardboard bent at an angle with little squares on them to look like skyscrapers with the windows, and you can assemble all those. But what you've done is you've created a cityscape and then you can put figures in it so you could actually recreate or create your own street photography by crafting your own model city and then photographing it. And so it's a it's combination photography and model making, I guess. Um, you'll notice, of course, in all of this stuff I'm doing, it's not intended to be super high resolution, super photorealistic. Obviously, those pinhole images I showed you earlier, they're definitely not photorealistic. They're very soft and you know black and white and you know everything about them. There, there, there's a kind of an abstraction to it, but I find it's a very fun thing to do, very rewarding as a photographer. Uh, when you feel that there's nothing new for you to photograph, here it is. You can create your own little worlds and photograph them to your heart's content. Now I said at the beginning of the video that I was going to capture images of this diorama set with a glass lens, with digital, and uh, with pinhole. I've decided um, I really like the glass lens look of these 
uh, this set. I like the narrow depth of focus that I'm getting, selective focus, and it really lends more of a three-dimensionality to the set. Uh, and so that's kind of a new thing because all those other past uh, projects that I showed you images from were all done with pinhole, whereas with a refractive lens, you're going to get a plane of really sharp focus. And uh, that's kind of interesting, and I really think it's fun. I also enjoyed finding out that my ISO speed for my paper is not too much slower uh, using these artificial LED lighting lights than it would be out in the daylight. And this is much more controlled in a comfortable atmosphere. And I don't have to worry about the sun and the clouds and the wind and all that. So I hope this gave you guys a lot of inspiration that you can sit down and you can make stuff like this. You can craft it. You can put it together and let your creativity run wild making dioramas and photographing them. Until next time, you have yourselves a great day and stay creative.